Hello, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the, the coming darkness upon us during this time of the year. I'm sure you've already noticed it. The days are much longer in darkness as we approach the winter solstice. And how does that affect us? Well, some of us find ourselves getting a little sleepier, a little more often, needing more sleep than we normally need or think we need. Uh, we just feel drowsy and it's hard for us to get going because you know, the circadias or whatever isn't you know working properly in getting our emotions going. Some of us are thinking ahead during the long winter months of getting some of those sad lamps, those seasonal affective of disorder lamps to sit in front of which have bright light that help perk us up a little bit and get the body going. Some of us are thinking about heading to the southern climes where it's maybe not as long as sunlight but there's more sunlight during the winter months normally at least in places like Arizona and Florida and Texas along the sh southern shores. Those are all ways that we learn to cope but uh, on the other hand the season of Advent Christmas as it was envisioned centuries ago uh, by those who were trying to keep the rhythm of what was called the church calendar adopting much of it from those ancient pagan sources, realized that the darkness was a very special spiritual lesson that we could benefit by by contemplating it. Dr. Alexander Shia, who was a part of the clergy educator retreat last January, said that we as spiritual leaders and educators ought to teach our people that the season of Advent is really one in which we embrace and welcome the darkness because it's all around us not just in uh, physicalness, but it's all around us in mentalness, in worry, in heartache, which is a part of living in this world. For example, we could consider briefly the darkness of just the, the world in which we live in. Any place we go, any time we are alive now as Americans, we are concerned about terrorism, people attacking us. We've spent trillions of dollars to try to secure ourselves from within and outside and even now after 10 years from that terrible infamous day in September uh, 2001, we don't feel secure, we're still worried and people wondering about who will blow up schools and stadiums and, and buildings. It, it's, a, it's a terrible fear that we just learn to live with and to adapt to. We also have that fear of any time uh, global warming, uh, overtaking and changing our whole patterns that have been known throughout so much of our history at least. I know there's an argument about what is causing it, whether it's carbon you know, emissions. Some people argue for that. Others say, well, it has nothing to do with that. It's just a, a climatic change that we're going through because after all, there were times when palm trees and warm beaches with sand existed on the North and the South Pole and we probably at this part were the North Pole at one time until an asteroid came by and hit us and shook it all out of whack and or an earthquake like you know one we had last spring and Japan even itself tilted the the axis of the earth a little bit and, and so that it affects the climate here and especially in the northern hemisphere but we do agree that it's changing and People are predicting that someday the breadbasket of North America will not be the, the, the plains of America, but it will be more the plains of, of Canada as the drought slowly creepens toward the north. And we see that in the areas of the sub-Sahara Desert, where uh, each year the desert comes further and further down, and even now uh, hundreds of families are being displaced. Thousands are, are starving because of lack of crops. And, uh, uh, a sustenance that they can uh, reap out of the agricultural life that they've been so accustomed to. So we have that concern that we are thinking about. And, and so anytime, any place, you know, we're, we're almost ready for something terrible that might happen. Now that's just on the world scale. We could talk about our personal lives, you know, the fear of sickness, the fear of death, the fear of losing our children, our loved ones, our spouses. It happens every day. You know, the day after Thanksgiving, I read in the paper about a, a man flying with his three children as a pilot going through Arizona, and he crashes into a cliff, and all of them perish. And it, as an understatement, the next day it says, the mother is in great grief. Well, what in the world would you expect? It's unbelievable. I don't know how she would cope with such a terrible loss. 
We're susceptible to that all the time. We concern about uh, a sickness attacking us. We're concerned about the institutions. We're, we're concerned about the apocalyptic feeling of suddenly losing our, our pensions, our jobs, our security financially, our homes. And many people are experiencing that. People who had good jobs are now living on the streets. So what can we do to be prepared? You know, more than just praying, you know, like with Captain Kirk, you know, beam me up, Scotty, to the Starship Enterprise and get me out of here. How can we live on this earth? Well, I think the answer is found in realizing, first of all, this world is not our home. We're just a passer through, as the old song goes. As the John says in that little epistle, we're, we're in this world, but we're really not of this world. We belong to a different domain, a different kingdom, a different presence, which is called the reign of Christ, the presence of Christ in our lives. That's so important for us to remember. We get so locked up identifying with this world that we think this is all there is. And along with that, that we identify our part of this world, the matter, our bodies, as being real, when they're just temporary shells. What we really are is a spirit who has come here and taken on this body and then forgot who we were. We're asleep. That's why that apocalyptic chapter of Mark, chapter 13, when it says that wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and floods and all these apocalyptic disasters will come, you know, don't go to sleep. Stay awake. Remember who you are. We are not our bodies. We are free for we are as God created me. The Apostle Paul said, all that we see, bodies, world, earth, it's not real, it's ephemeral, it's mortal. But that which isn't seen, as by spirit, is that which is eternal. And he said, in all the losses of his life, that's what gives him strength to keep going. And we've been given that spirit. It's like a guarantee, it's like a down payment of who we really truly are. So how do we experience that? We work at it. The essence of the word disciple is discipline, which means a regular attention to that work of growing in spirit. Like the person I've been reading lately, G.I. Gurdjieff, who said a very important part of victory in this life is our daily work. Work alone and especially working in groups because there we bounce off our ideas, we support one another and receive it back to ourselves as we give out. Years ago, I used to lead bicycle camps. I took many trips around uh, the Great Lakes, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario with young people. And one of the greatest fears that they, they would often have were dogs. In fact, when I started riding bicycle, I didn't know if I could keep going because of some of the vicious dogs. But a minister friend of mine who got me into biking showed me what to do. We were riding one day and this big, black, vicious dog came running after us, showing its teeth. He just stopped. He looked at the dog straight on and said, get out of here. You go home. You go home and play with your kittens. You are a big, big black sissy. And you know that the dog turned around and went back. You just face it. So how do we face our fears of mortality, of the world being such a fragile, perilous place in which to, to live and try to learn its lessons? Well, we just face it head on. We embrace that darkness. And we discover the answer again is within. In a few days, in a few weeks, what is coming is called Christmas. It comes from the, the Latin word, which was a part of the early church, Christ Mass. Christ presence as symbolized in the Eucharist. The way to be ready for that is to prepare for it by our work. And in the next two or three weeks, I will be sharing ideas of how we can work to be in the world but understand we're not of this world. That we are not our bodies, but we are free as God eternally has made you and me. Don't go to sleep. Stay awake. Work as if you are like a slave of the Master, the God creator of us, so that when the hour of test, the apocalypse comes, we will not be found without hope, but we will find ourselves in peace May you experience that this season. Amen and God bless you. God's peace be with you all.